welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. My name's Dan, and on today's episode, we're exploring the far eastern corner of the state of Victoria. So we've driven way over here in the south to this corner of the state, right where it borders with the state of New South Wales. We might actually drive over there tomorrow now that we're allowed to cross state borders. So anyway, this is a part of the country that I've never seen, I've always wanted to check out. And when we had a look on some maps, we saw Kurunjalong National Park is this whole area. It goes all the way down to the coast and it includes this huge, big forested area. What's in this park? I can see there's some hiking, there's rapids, there's beaches, there's campgrounds. Other than that, I don't really know. Some four wheel drive tracks to explore. So come along, let's check out this eastern corner of Victoria in Kurunjalong National Park. going for a walk here down to the beach in the park and something you're going to notice you've probably already seen in the scenery there are a lot of trees that have obviously been on fire and in fact every single tree in this park has been on fire so late 2018 early 2019 Australia had bushfires that they're saying once in a hundred years and so this whole region of Australia massive amount was on fire and I know like other parts of the world have a lot of big fires as well. The Pacific Northwest, California, you guys have had bad fires lately. And so I just looked it up. The area that burnt here in Australia was 20,000 square miles, which is roughly the size of England, which is roughly the size of Indiana, and which is actually more than 80 times bigger than the bushfires that happened in California in 2019. So when you want to get an area of an idea of how much area burned here in Australia, it is absolutely monumental, difficult to believe the amount of forest that went up. It was a raging inferno. And actually not far away from here is the town of Malakuta. I'll probably go there tomorrow or the next day. And that's the town that's really famous. Basically everyone in the entire town went down to the beach and posted photos and they were, you know, terrified for their lives because they couldn't drive out through the fires and the fires are advancing on them and they actually swam out into the water and were hoping that the Australian Navy would come and rescue them because they were gonna to burn to death because that's how bad the fires were in this part of Australia. And they ended up being okay. Lots of people in just sort of regular boats did rescue them and take them out a bit and they were sort of able to shelter the storm just by staying in the shallow ocean. But everything around here was a raging inferno and so, you know, huge part of what's happened in Australia recently. But at the same time, I'm kind of impressed to see how much it's already growing back. So you can see the eucalyptus trees especially, they really have this new coating of green. A lot of the sort of trunks are sprouting leaves. And so the forest is bouncing back. I would say, you know, it will come back to life. Most of these trees probably aren't dead, even though they got so severely burned. So interesting thing that I guess I'll see more of as I roam around this part of Australia that was so heavily impacted by the bushfires.
we're just hiking here through what looks like a cut block actually where they do logging in Canada we call it a cut block and uh, here I guess you know they're cutting down all these trees because they were affected by the burn and trying to make the hiking trail safe and whatever but you can see you know there's all these tree stumps everywhere and kind of all the remnants of all the dead trees and it's such a strange feeling for me I keep thinking about bears and I keep you know having that tingling sensation on the back of my neck of like oh I better watch out there could be bears around here of course I'm in Australia it's really odd to realize there are no large predators here there's actually nothing I need to worry about I could lie down on the ground and go to sleep I mean snakes and spiders but they don't really come and get you for no reason versus Canada North America where I mean grizzly bears are a thing and I've been up close to them and you don't want to mess with them so yeah, it's kind of funny to realize Australia for all of its like you know people say it has all these deadly critters it's actually really friendly it's actually really easy to be out in the wilderness not having to think about bears and mountain lions So we're just on the side of the track here, exploring down just a small connector road between two other roads. And on the side of the road here is an anthill. So these things are really rad. This is actually where a whole bunch of termites would actually live. So this is their home. They build this hill. Um, and I think they do it partially because it provides them warmth, like they conserve their body heat when they live inside the earth like that. And they also usually build them like around a tree stump or something so they can eat the tree stump. And you can see there's a whole bunch of little holes here. Um, the ants are actually in there right now, so there aren't any like climbing over the outside. And if I broke some of this off, you'd be able to see the ants and you can kind of see their whole, looks like a lung structure almost where they like crawl around inside. But I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna break open their home. But this anthill, what is it about a meter tall, about three feet. Um, I guess by Australian standards, this is a little baby one. And later in the trip, I'm pretty sure I'll see them twice as tall as I am and twice as wide. So first one I've seen in a long time since Africa, but I expect to see many more of these on the road. Really cool little site, Ant Hill, right on the side of the road. So I mentioned the importance of having living space when you're out in the wild and I'll give you a demonstration of that right now. So we've driven into this weather system, it looks like it's going to be like this for the next five or seven days. And so here we are, we're just on the side of the track, we've set up a wild camp. And as you can see, we've got the awning out tonight and I've added the wall sections to get us some rain free space. And so Katie's on dinner right now, just cooking some rice to put with our leftovers from the other night. And then as we come around, as soon as we get under the awning here, you can see how much different it is because we have rain-free living space. And so the two wall segments there from the Rhino Rack Batwing awning, they are just keeping the rain off and more importantly, keeping the wind off of that direction. So what that means is at the back of the Gladiator here, we have totally dry rain-free space. And this is just complete game changer as far as I'm concerned. We can hang out, we're gonna pull out the camp chairs, have dinner properly and actually enjoy ourselves tonight when really it's pretty ordinary weather and it's not the kind of weather that you dream of when you think, hey, let's go camping by the beach. And actually the beach is just a couple of hundred yards away. I can hear the ocean right now. 
And so here we are, the back of the Gladiator. It is slowly getting better, but it's still not finished. Uh, I have some improvements I'm still hoping to make. The first thing you'll notice is I did install a couple of drawers here that have a lot of food and a lot of camping gear in them. They work pretty well, but they're really heavy. They take up a lot of unnecessary space. I think they're actually a bad solution. I don't really like them, but they're kind of better than nothing at this point. So I'll see what I can do to improve them. The other thing lots of you have been asking about the kitchen. No, the kitchen is still not here. It's getting very, very close. So for now, this is just the Dometic fridge bolted down. There's actually nothing behind it at all, just a big emptiness of mess. And then hanging from the roof, I really hoped we could hang our wetsuits up here from this bungee netting that we put on the roof. Uh, and that doesn't work at all. The wetsuits are too heavy, the towels are too heavy, so they dangle too much. So have to come up with a better solution to store the wetsuits and the towels. Um, and right now the swag is a bit of a disaster because I forgot to bring the poles. And so we put the mattress inside our hiking tent. But now that it's raining so hard, we might just use our thermarests and our sleeping bags. So lots of things are still work in progress. We're still sort of improving and evolving as we go along. But certainly you can see standing here in the pouring rain, bone dry, no wind, this amount of outdoor living space. I think this is a game changer. If I had had this in Africa, I would have been a very happy little camper. Sorry for the pun, I couldn't help it. Another busy day on the beach in Australia, I guess. That's what it looks like. <laughs> 